Olá, amados irmãos, aqui é Carlos Bispo do canal Plutaco e hoje eu vou passar um vídeo a vocês, um vídeo do exterior falando sobre como o governo oculto tenta nos limitar e nos deixar presos, aprisionados nessa caixinha, nessa matrix e como nós podemos, sim, nos desprender dessa matrix, revolucionar, como nós podemos justamente evoluir, abrir a nossa consciência. Isso já acontece há milênios, amados irmãos, e é por isso que vocês têm que prestar atenção neste vídeo. Vocês vão ler e ouvir justamente como podemos evoluir. E não é só no Brasil que nós despertamos e estamos buscando mais sabedoria, entender justamente o universo e o nosso mistério, o mistério aqui no planeta Terra, mas também todo o planeta, em todos os países, há pessoas despertas como você, como você que está aqui agora para ver este vídeo e entender como nós fomos manipulados e limitados sobre o grande poder que nós temos, o grande poder universal que nós temos através da nossa consciência e através do amor que nós podemos evoluir, que nós podemos compreender para que nós possamos sim sermos o que somos e termos os poderes que nós temos e isso nos foi escondido. Então eu peço que vejam este vídeo até o final para que vocês possam compreender o que esses governos ocultos, o que esses manipuladores fazem conosco e que agora as portas da consciência estão sendo abertas para que nós sejamos o que somos e para que nós saibamos todos os segredos que antes foi escondido. Peço que deixe seu like para ajudar o canal, para que o mecanismo do YouTube propague este vídeo para mais e mais pessoas, porque você fazendo isso, tanto dando seu like como compartilhando esse vídeo, e também se inscrevendo para novas notícias, estará propagando justamente algo importante que eles querem esconder de nós. Muitas bênçãos e até a próxima, amados. What is life? And what is the meaning of life? Does life even have a meaning? Life is consciousness. And it is learning to understand what this consciousness is, what it means. And also to understand where this consciousness lies, where it exists in the realm of things. People will say, well, it exists within your head, within your brain. But even as you say this, you know that the statement simply can't be true because it's just too big. All that thought and all that memory. Just stop and look inside yourself and truly perceive your thoughts just for a moment. It's so vast, this realm of space that lies within consciousness. It feels like a whole universe in there, doesn't it? And yet it lies within an intangible nothingness. And it feels like that because that's exactly what it is. Nothing. Nothingness. But conscious. It's certainly something worth considering. And what is nothingness? Well, Alan Watts summed it up more than eloquently in a statement he made when he said that nothing is what your head looks like to your eyes and that that nothingness is what's watching. And I truly can't think of a better description. Nothingness and consciousness coexists in that space behind your eyes. You can't have something here without having that nothing there. So you need to be aware of that nothingness. The nothingness that lies behind your eyes. Because it is within that nothingness that lies consciousness. And it's all connected. It's connected to ourselves, it's connected to each other, and it's connected to everything in the universe. You need to open your minds to see this, and once you've seen it, the more you can begin to realize it, and the more you realize it, you can quite literally feel it physically. It's like a warmth and a rise in frequency in your body, the true realization that there is no other, there is only one, and all that truly exists within that singularity is love. There are only two human emotions, love and fear. All other emotions stem either directly or indirectly from these two base emotions. But fear is an illusion created by this reality, because all that truly exists within the singularity is love. 
that's all there is, and love is all there can possibly be, because there is only one. There is only the singularity. So how can there be any other emotion at all? Indeed, how can there even be any concept of emotion? Within the singularity there exists only the singularity, and the singularity is love. There is nothing else, and this love is not perceived as emotion, it just is. There is only love. It's being aware of this singularity that allows true understanding to occur. And people ask, well, what can I do to help myself become more aware of this singularity? And the answer is to live in love yourself. And when I say live in love, again, I'm not talking about the television version of love. I'm not saying that we all put flowers in our hair and sit around and singing songs. I'm talking about real love, true empathy and real understanding for all. And so what is love and how does one live in love and understanding of all others? Well, here's the trick, you see. You do it by being aware of the singularity of which we're all part of, of course. And that may sound like I'm talking in circles and I just returned to the beginning, but I didn't. Because you see, real love lies in the true understanding that there is no other. There is only the singularity. When you can truly understand that, and when you can fully realise that when you look at another person, you are not seeing another person. You are seeing another image of yourself, another manifestation of the singularity then you can truly understand what actual love is. Because real love comes from the true understanding that we are each other. We share a single consciousness. The divisions that supposedly exist between us are an illusion. How can you not love another person? That person is you. So how can you not love them? How can you not love all other people when they are all you? And when you realise that all the divisions between us are an illusion. Once people realise the truth of this, well then the entire system of control we live under simply breaks down. And how do you do it and where do you start? Well, you do it by realising that we are all one. There is no other. And you do it by doing what is right. In everything, rather than doing what is right for yourself personally, or what is right for the company, or what is appropriate for the occasion, or even what the law requires, you just do what is right. All the time, in everything. Realise and truly understand that when you do the wrong thing, the person who must suffer the consequences is simply a mirror of yourself. So all you have done is hurt yourself, and you have divided just a little bit further both society and the one consciousness that we are all part of. Stop the divisions, and the system breaks down. Understand that there is no division. This universe that we live in is truly created by our intent and our emotions. We quite literally create this universe ourselves. And if anyone has a doubt that the universe is holographic in nature, you've just got to look to quantum physics. If you want to see a physicist run from the room in horror, just ask them about the measurement problem. Now, if you don't know what the measurement problem is, the measurement problem is the problem that when a physicist goes to measure the size of an atom, he finds that the electrons are spread out to infinity. They can't be measured. And it isn't until he actually goes to measure the atom, the physical act of him measuring the atom, causes these electrons to coalesce and form the atom. The act of observation creates the atom. Now this is physical proof that we create the universe simply by observing it. So the universe is whatever we perceive it to be. If we perceive it to be a universe where the new world order is going to win and and terrible things are going to happen to the earth, then they will indeed happen. If the powers that be can convince enough people that terrible things are going to happen in the future, then these things will happen because we will make them happen with our consciousness, with our belief that they are going to happen. That's how it works. This is the hidden knowledge. They know that it's through the manipulation of people's beliefs and their emotions that creates the world that we live in. Now this is knowledge that was common knowledge in in ancient tribes and other cultures. This is why there was so much effort put into wiping out all these ancient cultures. And it was very important for them to remove this information from the human consciousness at this particular time as we're approaching the galactic ecliptic because this is the time of great enlightenment. This is the time of the end of the cycle. 
and this is the time of the quickening. And what the quickening is all about more than anything is to distract the collective mind of man from the approach of the end of this cycle because the more people who approach this cycle in love, the more people who live in love now, the more the overall consciousness of man ascends. And the more people who ascend, then that's the less of the collective consciousness that is here for the whatever forces you want to name them to use in the next cycle. And this is what the Christians refer to as the rapture, but it has nothing to do with Christianity. What it has to do with is the cycles of the planet, the rotational mechanism of our solar system is what it has to do with, because this is how the universe works. Thank <laughs> you.